Okay, let's start to look at electromagnetic waves, which is our next topic. So the source of electromagnetic waves will be a vibrating charge or an accelerating charge. So considering an individual charge here as an example, can we get this to go up and down and oscillate? Because if, if we can, we can get it to produce electromagnetic wave. So let's look at the reason behind that. So normally there's an electrical field surrounding this. If we get this to oscillate up and down this direction here, what will happen is we'll change this part of the field here because it will follow as it goes up and down in a motion. So it will actually look something like this instead. And the surrounding E field that's there will actually go something like that in both directions. Okay, so the electrical field will change as this actually vibrates up and down. So that's the E field, and that will be in the vertical plane here. All right, so there's an E field that's going to go, and that's going to change due to this vibration. It's going to change the surrounding E field. Now, on top of that, if this actually moves, you're going to get some sort of a magnetic field. So we've already done this idea that magnetic field here, if there's a current there generated, you'll get a magnetic field that goes around the wire in that direction using the right-hand grip rule. Now that also follows that if you've got a positive charge going there, the same sort of thing would happen. You're going to make it feel going out on this side of the board and in on that side. Okay? Now, the actual size of this field depends on a constant, the size of the current, and the distance away you are. So we focus on the current here. If we can get this to move faster as a charge, what will happen here is you get effectively more current moving, and therefore you've got a bigger field. Okay, and so this actually vibrates and changes speed as it vibrates and accelerates upwards. You're going to get a magnetic field in one direction, say into the board here, and then when it turns around and comes back down the other way, you're going to get a magnetic field out of the board. So it's going to start to do into the board, out of the board, into the board, out of the board, as it actually changes speed and changes direction. So every change in direction you get for that, you're going to get a change in magnetic field direction. Now what will that look like then? You should be able to draw it something like this. It's going to grow in one direction, so we'll go um, into the board to start with. It's then going to grow out of the board, into the board, and out of the board. So it's a pretty hard thing to draw, but it's at 90 degrees to the other field. So the magnetic field is in this plane here, in the horizontal plane coming out towards you, all right, in the horizontal, whereas the electrical field is simultaneously changed in the vertical direction. The up and down direction here, which is this direction here. So your E field would be going like that. And it changes simultaneously. When the E field is zero, you'll find the B field is zero, but they cross over. So there's better pictures of that we can look at. If you did have a positive charge vibrating like this in the vertical direction, you would get an electrical field in the vertical plane, as shown to you by this little blue line here. The electrical field will grow in one direction, and then as it uh, decelerates and slows down and it starts to go the other way, you'll find it becomes a zero at some point, the electric field is back to its zero position, and then it's going to go and grow in the opposite direction, and so on. Simultaneously, because this is changing speed and accelerating, you'll get a magnetic field generated because the current changes around it, and therefore the magnetic field will grow in one direction, in this case out of the board, and then back in the other direction, and so on. So there's your sort of typical electromagnetic wave, and it's based on an accelerating charge particle, okay, of a certain frequency. Now the frequency of this wave here will match the frequency of the oscillation. So if you somehow sort of sent out a wave that was a thousand hertz here, you would expect the electromagnetic wave to here to be a thousand hertz there. That would be the frequency of the wave. And if you know the speed of the wave, you can work out its wavelength from our work last year. Because you know a wave equation, V equals F times by lambda. That wave equation will let you relate the, write the three things together. Now the wavelength, don't forget, is the distance between pair of crests there, or a matching pair of troughs, if you want a pair of troughs that match that are consecutive. All right. So if you're going to describe an electromagnetic wave travelling in a vacuum, you need to get some key points across. One is it consists of oscillating electric and magnetic fields that are at 90 degrees to the velocity. Now that you could also use the word transverse there because it means the same thing, saying they're transverse waves. All right while the velocity goes this way, they're going to uh, oscillate at right angles to that. So the E field is oscillating at right angles to it, and the B field is right, oscillating at right angles to it. Okay? And the other thing to point out is that, that they are at 90 degrees to the velocity and at 90 degrees to each other. So that we realise that the oscillating magnetic field is at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the electric field. So that's typical for all electromagnetic waves. 
Now, I should point out that to scale, the electrical field vector, or wave, is usually much, much larger compared to the magnetic field vector. This is the one that's responsible for how it interacts with matter. So the magnetic field vector, if you were drawing that, would only be tiny bit by comparison there. Okay? That magnetic field vector there that's changing is not the big thing that actually sort of impacts on for radio signals and microwaves and stuff like that. It's the electric field part that's important. The other thing to be aware of is that, that frequency here of oscillation is very important because if the frequency changes, it changes the type of wave you're getting because there's a full electromagnetic spectrum based on what your frequency of your source is. And if it changes, it changes the type of wave. So let's just look at some examples of that. So at very low frequencies here, you've got things called radio waves, okay? EM waves called radio waves. At a slightly higher frequency, you'll go to microwaves. If you go even higher frequency, you get infrared, which is that heat that just uh, sits below the red part of the spectrum. If you've got visible, which would be Roy G. Biv, or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and that's a very narrow part of that spectrum that ours can pick up, okay? Very small amount. And you can see here that we're talking about the size of buildings there in terms of the wavelength of this thing, going down to humans, honeybees, pinpoints. So they're getting a smaller and smaller wavelengths as we go up to higher frequencies. So these are getting higher frequencies, higher frequencies. And we've got ultraviolet above violet, then X-rays, and then gamma rays. So the greater the frequency in general, the more dangerous the waves, by the way, they carry more energy uh, as, as photons. And you can see the uh, size of the wavelength is coming down as the frequency goes up. And there's a reason for that. They can show you that if you increase the frequency of a wave and make it vibrate faster, it'll send the waves out more often, so the waves become closer together, which is something we did last year. All right? And this is obviously linked to our wave equation as well. All right? We're going to do a lot of calculations here where we're going to use C as the speed of light for radio waves and all light waves in a vacuum or in air, effectively. Now I'm just going to show you an animation here produced by the University of Colorado it's a website called fet.colorado.com. So you can actually get this to wiggle this electron individually and get it to oscillate and vibrate if you like and accelerate. And you can see it's producing electrical field that's changing around it. So what you can see here is you've got the electrical field vector is changing and this is it oscillates, okay? That electrical field is going across. What happens at the receiving antenna here is the electrical field as it goes past the electrons in this antenna will cause the electrons to accelerate because you've got electrical field passing over here and if the electrical field is in one direction, say up, that will cause the negative electrons to go down because they're negatively charged particles. They'll accelerate downwards. So they'll actually vibrate in exactly the same frequency as the electrical field is reversing backwards and forwards in as it goes past it. And this is how you pick up the signal sent out by your radio towers over here. Okay. It's important to notice here that these radio towers are sending out waves that are polarised, which means that all the vibrations in electrical fields are restricted to one plane. In this case, it's restricted to the vertical plane, okay, because it's got a vertical transmitting tower, you need a vertical receiving tower as well to pick that one up. So the plane of polarisation is defined as the direction of the velocity combined with the direction of oscillation of the electrical field, okay. In this case, it's actually vertical. You could, of course, do horizontal ones, if you were trying to actually not have interference from other signals, which is what they do with country channels versus city channels. So let's have a quick recap here. It was James Clerk Maxwell in the 1800s that said accelerating charged particles or vibrating charged particles will cause electromagnetic waves to be sent out. And it's the electrical field component here that's the important part, okay? That determines the way the wave will travel and how it will interact with matter. The plane of polarization is determined by the direction of the uh, velocity and the accelerating E field. So in this case, if you had a vertical pole, had a vertical pole like this, then you expect if this is the way you'd actually send your alternating current through, so if you send an AC signal through here, let's say on a million hertz, these will cause electrons in here to go up and down. That will change the electrical field around it and send out electromagnetic waves of the electric field polarised in the vertical plane. And it will send it out in all directions as well at the same time with the magnetic field at right angles to that in each case in the horizontal plane. So in actual fact, city TV channels are broadcast in ways that are horizontally polarised. That's the E field anyway. So the antenna on your city roofs needs to be horizontal to pick up those horizontal waves. The country stations tend to be vertically polarised. If you've got a radio station that's broadcasting at 102.3 megahertz, you can actually work out the wavelength of those radio waves. I've rounded this down to 100 megahertz to make it easy. So the speed of light, or well, the speed of radio waves, C, 
is equal to 3.00 by 10 to the 8 approximately, okay, meters per second. And you can use your wave equation and rearrange it to find the wavelength of those waves. So it's going to be V divided by F. And if you cancel those down here, if you change this here, this will be 300 by 10 to the 6. And you can cancel this down to basically 3 meters. All right, so it's got a three meter wavelength here. So if you think about it being a city channel, it's gonna be horizontally polarized. You get a wave coming in that's sort of taking up three meters to go and do its full wavelength, okay? And don't forget that the frequency of the waves always matches the frequency of the station, regardless of whether it goes through slow medium or a faster medium, because the medium does not affect these two here. If you go to a slower medium, all that will happen is you get your wavelength becoming shorter. That will stay fixed because that's based on the source. It doesn't change. You never have to change the frequency of your radio tuning to different sources when it's a foggy day or a wet day uh, when the wavelength changes or the speed changes for the radio waves. All right, thank you.